Indian police tell Christians to halt prayer meetings to avoid attacks. The Indian publication, The News Minute, reported that more than 25 pastors in the city of um, uh, Belagavi in nearby areas were approached by the police and not and were asked to not gather for prayers and to, quote, avoid meetings until the end of the winter session of the uh, Karnataka Assembly. Let me explain. Uh, Belagavi will be hosting the Karnataka legislative session in the late December, during which a controversial anti-conversion bill will be discussed. Pastor Thomas explained to a local news outlet that the police told him to avoid gathering for prayers because far-right groups might attack them and the police will not be able to protect them. Earlier this month, Pastor Leme uh, Sherion was accused by a right-wing Hindutva group of performing forced conversions at the church during Sunday prayers. Christians are the subject of animosity in Belagavi and have suffered increasing attacks from militant Hindutva groups. They are, they, are, they are concerned with the police's inability to protect them. Aside from notifying pastors, the police also told building owners who rent their spaces to Christian assemblies to not allow these congregations to gather. Um, so this like just made me so angry on so many different levels. So uh, to, to break down the things that are happening here, um, when I'm talking about this winter assembly or this winter session, basically th th there's going to be, um, laws, potential laws are going to be discussed. And one of the laws that is going to be discussed is a anti forced conversion law or anti conversion law. And this is extremely contentious and this has been on the books in some other states and now it's time for this state to discuss if they're going to bring something like that forward and because this law is being discussed it um it's raising the temperature and it's raising a lot of bigotry and hatred against christians um and instead of the police actually doing their job and protecting a religious minority in their area not only are they telling people hey you actually have to take it upon yourself to avoid attacks and by doing this you have to forgo your civil right to assemble and practice your faith not they but then here's where I, it really blows my mind and i get really angry not only do they go tell like over two dozen pastors to take upon themselves to do this because apparently they're just not going to protect them or they can't protect them well enough. Um, they went a step further to tell, because in this area, apparently a lot of the Christians don't actually own their own churches, um, particularly Protestant pastors. And so they rent from other buildings. The police took it a step further to go to the people who are renting spaces to these Christians and say, stop it. Stop renting to these people. Don't allow these congregations to, to gather. Like, this seems like such a wild overstep. I, I, I don't even have words. It, may, and, ugh, it makes me so angry. But, Armin, you go ahead, because I have more I could get into. I mean, isn't the police kind of intimidated themselves as well? Like, isn't that not the reason? Because they can't just hold up against all these Hindu Twa, the Hindu Twa mob? Um, I would say that except for the fact that they go, not only do they not appropriately address the threats against these Christians, they actually file cases against the Christians who get attacked for potential forced conversions. Yeah, but it's not the police that is filing the uh, reports, right? Like we had... We had Hindutva file police reports against us as well. Like, you, like in this one case that I was reading about, it was the police oh. who oh, prompted okay. an investigation of forced conversions into a congregation that was just attacked. Okay, 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 yeah. Just so, like, I know, like, there's going to be some people like, but forced conversion are a thing, and they're happening in India. Okay, so uh, yeah, we we're sure, like, in, guys, India is like one eighth of the planet. Like, 
even population wise, right? I'm sure everything that you could think of is happening in India. Like there's like just but that's just a lot of large numbers, okay? But what but the problem is within within India, whenever something happens that is actually real, it's just becomes fuel, becomes a weapon for Hindutva to then accuse everybody under the sun for you know with that thing. You know what I mean? Like you have one person, like one Christian somewhere abusing a Hindu or doing something or forced conversion or something like that. I mean, it's not one, but the forced conversions are, are a thing, okay? I'm just saying like, but then but then this is like Hindu, like the Hindutva or the like right-leaning Hindu people, they just be like, they're going to see it everywhere, even when it's not happening. They're going to see it even when the Christians are the victim, you know what I mean? Which most of the time are. By the way, I can the, you know, is any Muslim community like standing up for Christians because like or or are the Muslims just like only standing up when when they're the victims? Like I don't know. Like this like are the Abrahamic religions gonna support each other against all this anti-Abrahamic <laughs> oppression by the Hindus or are they the just being oppression. tribal? The Dharmic, um, hey, yeah, the Dharmic I oppression don't, against I mean, Abrahamic. Honestly, it shouldn't matter like minorities in india really need to just show unity with each other because yeah. ever like everyone's getting it in some way shape or form um so i actually wanted to highlight something really quickly um i read uh to prepare and research for this i read this amazing article by al jazeera that was published recently that i highly suggest to people um i've actually found that al jazeera's reporting on india is pretty good um it's called why india is witnessing a spike in attacks on christians and churches and um there has been a skyrocketing in the attacks of christians recently which is part of the reason why i wanted to cover this news because we talk about um anti-muslim attacks in india all the time probably every week but we actually don't talk about attacks on christians very often and like i said there has been a severe spike in uh not only just attacks on christians but actually harsh anti-christian rhetoric and this article goes into how it's Muslims first, then Christians. And this is part of an effort to diversify the targets of Hindutva um, ideology or um, state oppression or just right-wing vigilantism as a way to try to make the, um, the goals of um, uh Hindutva sympathizers more objective by trying to make it seem like, oh, we're not just going after one group. Like we actually have all these issues with these other groups, as you can see here, like it's going on everywhere. And some of the stuff talked about in this article made my blood boil. Like, wait, let me find this real quick. By um, the way, before you continue, you're for you're for saying Al Jazeera is a is a Qatar propaganda outlet. Actually, you're for Al Jazeera English is really good. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Like they have one some of the best journalism and reporting I've ever seen. Like if you guys think like just because they're based in an Islamic country, they can't be like good. Like I don't know about Al Jazeera Arabic. I've heard many bad things about it. Yes, I've heard I, it's I wild. <laughs> I don't know if how much of it is true. I've seen some bad things as well, right? But again, I don't given that how many people are biased, I don't know if that's accurate. But Al Jazeera English is really good like do their documentaries their reporting their journalism is really really good um yeah but yeah go on um so i just want to read a little bit of this because this is so much larger than just what's going on in the uh belagavi um it's it's really happening particularly across the northern states in india where there is um a bit more of a christian demographic um, so here it's, um, talking about a, like a rally that happened and I just wanted to get into this and they're talking about, um, an RSS leader. Um, so as things later unfolded, Bhagwat's speech was supplemented with violent attacks on Christians and churches in different parts of areas, in, in different parts of India with mobs making open calls to behead them 
and stop alleged conversions of Hindus. Three days later after the speech, Rajmesh Sharma, a BJP legislator in Madhya Pradesh, made calls for an India free of veiling Muslims and Christian priests while addressing a crowd. On Sunday, in southern uh, Karnataka's Belaru town, alleged members of Bajrang Dal, a far-right Hindu group, behind numerous attacks on minorities, disrupted a Christian prayer meeting, accusing the community of conversion. Wait, um, there's been calls for um, uh, vigilantes going outside churches, telling them to shoot the traitors. There was, this is, on October 3rd, a mob of nearly 250 Hindu vigilantes armed with iron rods ransacked a church in Ruki in the northern state of um, Uttar Rakhand, which was governed by the BJP. Witnesses told Al Jazeera but only about a dozen people were in the church when the attack occurred. So it's a dozen versus 250. Pearl Lance, the daughter of the church's pastor, which was allegedly molested by a man, and abused, attacked by women, and her phone was snatched. Rajat Kumar, a staff member at the church, was hit in with iron rods multiple times on his head, resulting in serious injuries. They dragged me by the neck to the ground while raining blows to my face and back. I became unconscious while I was hit with a rod to my head. Um, Eva Lance, the pastor's elder daughter, said the family had reported suspicious activity to the police at least four times before the attack. We received hateful anti-Christian threats by unknown men who followed us before the attack. They accused us of conversions and threatening violence. I had sent an email, visited the police station, and registered a formal complaint on October 2nd. She also alleged a late police response when the attack happened. We were assured um, of security by the police, but no help came. Even on the day of the attack, we kept calling the police, but they only came an hour after the mob had done the damage. The police even filed a report against the pastor's family, alleging forced conversions, promoting religious disharmony, and criminal conspiracy, even robbery. So in the past nine months, there have been more than 300 attacks on Christians. Wow. It's so crazy. I do not know it goes that far. The majority Um, of them in BJP-ruled states, like Uttar Pradesh and... Madhya Pradesh. Although, I mean, there are some in states ruled by Congress or hmm. the tribal governments. Read what Katie is saying. Katie is saying anti-Christian attacks mostly happen where Christians are the high, largest minority. They'll go after anyone that's not them, including some Hindus. Um, Martin Neil Moller's quote comes to mind. I'm not sure what that means, but um, no, this is where it gets crazy. I really need to stress this. On so at least nine Indian states have planned anti-conversion laws, which activists have said uh, emerged as a new laboratory for anti-Christian hatred in India. On October 1st, more than 1,000 people gathered in the Sujuja, God damn, it's hard to pronounce, of uh, Chhattisgarh for Stop Religious Conversions Rally, one in a series of events hosted, uh, organized in the garb of anti-conversion protests in the central Indian state. Addressing the gathering, Parman Manand Mahajraj, a far-right Hindu leader, urged the people to arm themselves with axes to teach ch- Christians indulging in conversions a les- lesson. Why do you keep an axe? Behead them, he said, asking the crowd to follow. The stop, warn, and kill dictums against Christians. And then the police didn't even. Okay, Susie, file... we do need to move. Up. We do need to start moving to other news because we're going to run out of time. But then they didn't like, even file a case against him for right, like Susie, violence. We, we really we spend so much time on this. Katie is saying the code that he, she was referring to was the the code oh. that the the and there was no one left to speak for me. Like that quote. That's the famous quote. Um, I just want to address. Um, just say one more thing. Um, before we move on, is that. The way the way you you could I, I think about it I don't know if how accurate this is is like the the far right Hindu nationalist um, act you know view against Christianity and Islam could be somewhat looked at as the payback against the two former empires that basically oppressed india right that 
the Islamic Empire and the British Empire, right? So anti, you know, these are this is basically their way of standing back, um, and you know, being strong. You know, the way, for example, Israel sees that you know is, Jews were always oppressed, uh, but now they're strong. Now they have a country. Now they have an army. Now they are, can stand um, for themselves instead of looking upon others. To defend themselves against their oppressors, now they they're the ones that are pushing back, right? So I think a lot of, you know, Hindu nationalists would say like, you know, the the, the Islamic Empire came and they they basically oppressed us, and now we're pushing back. And the British Empire came and they oppressed us, and now we're pushing back. And that's like against that's why the anti-Muslim bigotry and the anti-Christian bigotry can some to some extent be viewed as like that. I don't know. If anybody from India in the live chat you know, sees it that way in some amongst, th that's what the impression I get among many people who are, have. No, they literally country. say that. They literally say that. I mean, when we were faced with our deluge of harassment, they, they, it's explicitly clear. But this is like the worst form of post-colonialism where you're going to, I mean, because we can say that it can be explained historically in that way, but it needs to be emphasized that it's in, unacceptable to take out yeah of course a, a, a retributive justice against yes. a, a collective of yes. people who had nothing to do with it yeah and no i wasn't just minorities it, was... no i just really yeah, no. i just want to nail yeah that because some, I, I'm so, I, some people hear that they were like based like oh yeah that's good that actually sounds good like they are basically believing in collectivism they believe in collective punishment they believe that they could hold muslims today responsible for the crimes of people that had nothing to do with them, right? Or, you know, so, so that's obviously insane. Um, oh yeah, Ayan is saying, yes, Armin, you're right. It's us, yeah, I mean, it's, it's tribalism, basically. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.